Hey guys, welcome back to the Joe Jaguar Show one more time. I know you see something behind me, so let's get to it. This is a William Optics 126, and it's a doublet 53 refractor. Let's talk about it. So I found this guy and I've wanted to try him, but this is only uh, almost four years old, so it's not that old, but it's already been discontinued by uh, William Optics. Why? I think it looks like William Optics wants to go like triplets refractor, but I don't see what is the problem with a doublet. You know, this is again, 126 millimeters, uh, which is a good size, five inch. Uh, it isn't, too light, it measures about 22 pounds. Now the Takahashi FS128 was about 18 pounds. So this guy is a bit heavier. I like the handle here. It is also F7.7. Doesn't really say on the front what the focal length is, uh, but we can extrapolate So uh, 990 uh, divided by 126 equals 7.8. So it's about there, 790 millimeter focal length. Maybe it says on the warranty card. But anyway, so it is, I think a good balance of a visual telescope being F7.7, five inch. It has a nice three inch focuser on here, which you guys more most people probably would like you get it can twist or rotate 360 plus you could also rotate I guess the the diagonal part as well so two different things it's notched which everybody should it's a dual speed and it even has a, a thermometer here I'm not sure if most people really need to know how cold or warm it is in the night um, type of thing now as you can probably see I am not using the blue Los Mandy's plate uh, and because my EQ6s and EQ5s all take the Vixen kind maybe one day I'll upgrade the head to both of them that way I can accept both but right now uh, you know it is pretty solid I understand some of you might say an EQ5 even with the two inch steel legs is near the um, limit of this guy but you know what it actually does no shakes maybe because it doesn't have the aluminum tripod or it doesn't have the cheap tripod like the inch and a quarter inch and a half inch and three quarters and it's it's pretty solid even on this guy but yes it's probably at 22 pounds nearing the limit uh, i guess of a cg5 eq5 but again we're not talking about the mount i just the eq6 is much heavier for demonstration purposes so use whatever mount you want and have the lens is a synthetic. Let me see if I can show it to you guys. Okay, as you can see, synthetic fluorite FPL 53. Nice doublet, has a nice green coating. Uh, I just cleaned the lens. It looked like the previous owner uh, probably capped it for the night and then brought it in. It had, it was a tiny, tiny bit dirty, only on the outside lens. And it looked like it had a little bit of dew marks from, uh, you know, it doing over. But again, wasn't on the inside and the lens looks perfect. I just had to give it a little clean on the outside. Looks perfect. It also does come with a bat mask. Uh, there is a couple pieces broken, like here. I think there's two pieces broken here. And one here, one here, uh, and maybe one here. Um, but I'm sure it can still work. I may try to fix it and see how that goes. It's just for focusing. It's not a big deal. Okay, two questions for you. You guys that own this scope, it actually, it's like it almost, the tension is so minimal. It's so super easy to go up and down. 
Now it does have a thumb screw. Now I've looked in here and I don't see any grub screw at all in there. Should there be a little grub screw to put a little bit more tension if you need? I know some people, they put an elastic band around here and that will fix it. But if you guys have this scope or even the 102 model or one of the other models, um, tell me if there's supposed to be a grub screw in here to give it a little bit more attention. I guess I could always uh, email William Optics and ask. Uh, it could be an easy fix, but I don't want to put one if it's not supposed to have. But why would it have a little hole and it's threaded for that reason? The other thing, if you guys have this telescope, even though it comes with a nice 3 inch dual speed, you know, I've tried to make it smoother. So, it heck, it's smooth, but you got to put a lot of force on this guy. Now, this guy's not quite so bad. But it's just you got to put so much force for it to move. Now, I've loosened these, these, these. I have fooled around with everything here as best as I can. And I don't see any other way to make this any smoother or softer. Does that make sense, guys? So it's just you have to put the little bit of force. But it does go up and down smooth. But... You know, I'm used to oh, it's just so much strength you got to put on. This one is not too bad, but it's not like this kind. This is also a William Optics SCT focuser. And on this one, you can just put, let me see if I can put it here, the slightest like touch and it just moves so slow. You know so freely i'm not putting so much force and even this one's even so gentler so on here it's smooth but on this guy it doesn't matter which one i use this one it's like you have to put a i just want to put the smallest touch like a feather touch i thought the focuser you know when you look on these were like very close to a feather touch but it's just so much or is it because it's so heavy and weighty that it needs to be like that anyway you guys tell me what you think if you have one okay guys those are two little issues I mean I've never used a William Optics uh, actually Angelus you guys saw has a 110 millimeter William Optics ED um, it's a short one uh, f6 uh, type of thing and that focuser is also very very smooth so I don't know Obviously, it's a different focuser, but being that this guy is much beefier and heavier, three inch, uh, is just carrying a lot of weight, so it's made really solid, so it's not as slippery smooth. I mean, it's smooth, but it's just not the lightest touch to move it. So uh, here, I don't know. That could be easy fix if it's just missing that, or maybe it's supposed to be like that. Uh, if it is, I'll, I can just put an elastic band there to give it a little bit more friction, I guess. But I'd like to know if you guys have this scope or one of the other sizes. Um, I guess the 81, the 103, is it? Um, and then you guys tell me. But anyway, here's a William Optics 126, which is a good size, okay? And an F7.7, almost at F8, with the 53 uh, synthetic lens should produce very high contrast uh, colors. Now, this could be if you could find it. I guess because it's just discontinued uh, from the from the warranty card. This was made in uh, January of 2020, so it's not even that old. It's just under four years old. So, uh, but I don't know why it's already discontinued. So I cut my own Vixen bar to the exact size. Now that's the, the other thing when you have one of these handles, it's good in one way, but then your Vixen bar has to be the exact same thing. And I didn't have one that was exactly this size. So I, had, I took a 13 inch bar, cut it down, drilled a hole, and that way I can do it. So um, anyway, that's it guys. Uh, like, comment, and subscribe on the video if you like. If you're not subscribed, why haven't you hit that button already? Last thing I'll say is if you want something like this, you can get a five inch with a medium high grade name brand with already a good focuser 
you know. Um, if we, I guess, compare this to the something like the Evo Star 120, here you're getting six millimeters more, okay. Here you're getting a sliding dew cap, which is not a big deal, but it does help as far as portability a little bit because you can shrink it type of thing. It's nice, the three colors that you can choose. It comes with a huge focuser, way better than the Evo Star series. So that is already, because most people may upgrade it, uh, unless you just pure, pure, pure visual, I guess. So that's the differences there. And you know, you might pay a little bit more, but again, it, at least it's coming six millimeters diameter more, bigger focuser, sliding dew cap, and a higher name brand. So that's also another thought, I guess. So that's why I picked this guy up. We're going to test it next on the planets. Saturn's a little bit far now, but we'll still try, okay? And we're gonna see what happens and I'll try to show it to you. Then maybe on the next video after that, I can ask, maybe I don't know if he's gonna allow. I can ask the guy that I sold the Takahashi to, the 128FS. This is a 126 millimeter. 53 lens. The Takahashi is a 128, is only two millimeters difference, and it's also a doublet. Both are a doublet. They're almost identical. The Takahashi is supposed to be a top name brand. This is a medium high grade name, so they're kind of should be comparable. They're both doublets. Both should perform. Price is still a little different. Maybe if Eddie allows me to borrow, I can actually test these guys side by side and show you. If he doesn't, then obviously I can't. But anyway, um, like, comment, and subscribe. I'll see you on the next video. If anybody you know is getting into astronomy, please share my channel. If you're on the forums, somebody's asked about something that I've done a video to, please share my link if you don't mind. Why not you? Why not me? Hey guys, here's an update. So I have so many nuts, bolts, screws, thumb screws, and I found one and it fits nice and tight. And I'm not sure if you can see, it's nice and tight. So if I let go of it, look how easy it goes down. So I'm just gonna do that. If I can color it blue just to match, I will. So there's one problem solved, easy fix.